every mad scientist needs a hero to foil him. That's just the way the world works. And if he can knock Mickey Mouse and the world's biggest video game company off their pedestals along the way, well, that's just icing on the cake. 1988, Nintendo and its 8-bit, 800-pound gorilla rule the world console market with a 90% share. Languishing with a single-digit share, Sega throws down the gauntlet. A 16-bit console named Mega Drive in Japan and Genesis in the US, despite a blazingly fast processor and catchy ads, there's no shaking Nintendo's stranglehold on the market. One in four American homes has an NES. 1990. Sega Brass decides to create a fleet-footed mascot to show off its processing speed. Something quicker on the call than Nintendo's chubby little plumber. But what could be strong enough to knock Mario off his high horse and dig Sega out of a hole? Well, let's see. A kangaroo? A rabbit? Artist Naoto Oshima pitches management on a blue hedgehog with red shoes. Originally, uh, when they came up with the, the concept of the hedgehog, I recall the president of Sega of America, Michael Katz, uh, said, what, what the heck, you know, what is the hedgehog? The hedgehog doesn't uh, really you know, exist here and so forth. It was a very uh, strange feature. Meanwhile, Sega programmer Yuji Naka hammers out a new game program for the Genesis, in need of a wicked fast critter. Yup, Sonic the Hedgehog. There were things he saw about Sonic that he liked. He liked the attitude in Sonic. You know, if you weren't playing, for instance, Sonic would start tapping his toe and staring at you. Naka throws Sonic into his new 2D side-scrollers loops, off cliffs, and pinball-like bumpers on a quest to find some golden rings and defeat the evil Dr. Robotnik. Looks like the perfect combination of character and technology, but not everyone is sold on the idea. A president of Sega of America said this can't work here in America, and he actually jumped down 10 reasons why Sony can't be successful. And I'm still looking for that note so I can frame it because the history proved otherwise. June 23, 1991, Sega unleashes Sonic on the US and goes for one wild ride. By 1992, Sega overtakes Nintendo for the first time in seven years with a 65% market share. Oh, no. Magazines crown Sonic King. Some claim it's the best game ever made. There was a point where you went to the Sega headquarters and as you were walking in, there was a little statue of Sonic. When you came out of the elevator, there was a statue of Sonic. And then you went through the little hall of Sonic where they had all kinds of Sonic memorabilia. And then you went into the office where they could play Sonic. Then he took the competition to school. Okay, class, can anyone tell me who this is? Hmm. Okay, how about this? All right, how about this? That's right. In 1993, a Q survey says more elementary-aged kids in the U.S. know Sonic than Abe Lincoln and Mickey Mouse. Honestly, the Sonic brand is everywhere. T-shirts, lunch boxes, Happy Meals, even an appearance as the first video game character in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, knocking down a lamp post and injuring two spectators. In 1994, Sega's rep gets whacked too, when Capitol Hill hearings on violent video games give Mortal Kombat a public flogging. By the end of the 16-bit era, Sonic helped Sega sell 31 million consoles, yet Nintendo's SNES sells 50 million, ultimately winning the 16-bit war. But with more than 25 sequels and spin-offs, grossing in the neighborhood of a billion bucks, Sonic's boom still echoes today.